is David Crowley. This guy is working on an amazing project. Uh, I got to spend some time with him at some of the events uh, recently. Uh, th this is a great team working on Grey State the movie about the encroaching police state. So I want him to come up and tell you about it. David Crowley, everyone. To me, the light of humanity is not in its technical capability, capability to enslave each other and itself, but in the calm understanding that if I am to be truly free, then I must observe your right to be free as well. And here at Fall Fest, I see that familiar recognition of a fellow freedom lover in everyone I meet. And in the words of Dr. Paul, that idea of liberty is becoming more and more popular. So, let me introduce myself. My name is David Crowley. I'm a husband and a father. And I'm a combat infantry veteran with over five years of service and two deployments. But I'm here speaking today as a filmmaker. I'm the writer and director of the film Grey State. Now, has anyone heard of Grey State? You know, that doesn't surprise me because the trailer racked up nearly 150,000 views in its first week on YouTube. The overwhelmingly positive response to the trailer tells me that for whatever reason, it's something people want to see. Since we began developing the concept two years ago, People have been asking me, you know, what is the gray state? This is a question whose answer needs no further clarification than for you to look outside your window and observe what your world has become. You may recognize it as the world of financial, or as the world financial prison that has been created by bankers. You may recognize it as a visualization of the uneasy fear you may now have as a police car pulls up behind you. You may recognize it as one quick step away from the pervasive surveillance state in which we now live. In any one of these estimations, you would be correct. In short, the gray state is the culminating manifestation of the darkest trends our negligence and malignancy have to offer. As you watch the trailer, you see that every scene exemplifies something sick about the way our culture has evolved. Every scene is a revealing stab at the innocuous beginnings of a totalitarian police state, suggesting just how our silence and inaction might be rewarded. It is a preview what happens should the Ron Paul revolution, that fire of free thought, roll over and die and let them have their way with our country? Gray State may be just a movie, but if that's all it really is, then Ron Paul is just another congressman. If you've already seen the Gray State tra trailer, you'll recognize this tagline. The second American revolution may not be remembered. It surprised me how little people question that statement, and not in the way that they usually don't question what they see here. You know, it seems like they, they really get it. They understand that if the frontal attacks on liberty we endure on a day-by-day -day basis ever culminate into a shooting war, then it will result in either a total teardown of our current system of government or a complete eradication of the fundamental idea of freedom. And looking around, you know that, that's, that such a possibility is not far off. The film explores trends like RFID, bio, and nanotechnology. These represent the fusion of authoritarian control and human flesh, and these trends are no longer science fiction. Trends like the slow, systematic takeover of the free exchange of information as foretold by Orwell, also, unfortunately, no longer science fiction. Trends like the slow yielding of our quiet American towns and streets to a choking array of federal surveillance grids, illegal police checkpoints, and literal foreign occupation. Trends like the acceptance of torture as a sanctioned practice, the acceptance that a portion of our children will be siphoned off to be sacrificed in foreign wars, and that the acceptance that this is simply the way things are. The acceptance that some people may be arrested, black bagged, and imprisoned without charges or trial, and that as long as we submit to state authority, continue to yield our liberties, and modify our behavior to fit the mold of federal approval, this unlucky person being dragged away will not be us. And as long as at least we believe our freedoms are not at stake, we will be allowed to return to the comfortable complacency of our padded, regimented lives. We live in strange times. We share this nation with people who think drinking raw milk is radical behavior. People who think organizing a military stand-down 
his radical behavior. People who think committing our troops and our resources to more and more undeclared foreign wars with increasingly thin veneers of moral justification is actually patriotism. People who are unfamiliar with interpersonal communication, completely without trust, a sense of community, or allegiance beyond corporate brand loyalty. We live in a society that is fractured, marginalized, and distracted. The film will explore the consequences of this complacency, but also the film will explore the rise of those who did not live their lives asleep. The rise of patriots, those who know that liberty is not given but purchased, and at some point collectively decide that enough is enough. Patriots loyal to the founding principles of this country by which the most successful experiment of liberty in human history has drawn its voice. Backed by the awesome heritage of armed resistance to tyranny, each American can proudly claim, throw off their shackles, and retake their birthright. We are not a nation of sheep who should look at our history with shame and submit to authoritarian rule. The Gray State will tell this story as well. There are many people in this country, and in this room perhaps, who anxiously await an armed revolution. They imagine that if only we could return to constitutional republic and embrace free markets and individual liberties again, that the American dream will return to us. But will the second American Revolution be remembered? Because now we begin to appreciate the magnitude of our opposition. This is not an obsolete single tyrant thousands of miles away who threatens everyone's freedom publicly, but a convoluted mess of legislation and social evolution that slowly and gradually usurps our liberties one at a time whose enforcers believe that they are in, working in the best interest of all, and whose ranks are filled by our own friends and neighbors. They say revolutions are won by the 3%, and that may be true. Many potential 3 percenters are here today. But the gray state, the real gray state, is the 97% will not have their entitlements threatened by a minority. And at the first sign that these government subsidies will end, will finally act to betray us. And with the array of technological and logistical weapons arrayed against us, should that armed revolution begin? Should that shot heard around the world be fired in our time? We are locked into a conflict that will end with either our total, complete throwdown of the system, after perhaps 50 years of guerrilla warfare and uncounted casualties, or our utter annihilation. Since we can no longer tolerate an uneasy coexistence or truce with tyranny, neither are good options. And friends, in the event that the revolution should fail, history will not remember us. Because the gray state will have won, and the masses will go back to the comfortable ignorance the state so loves in its own citizens, and no record will be left to inspire future descent. Do not let it get to that point. Before we go so far as to commit our families to alienation, persecution, and guerrilla warfare, we must exhaust every possible avenue of peaceful reclamation of our country. Having been to Iraq and Afghanistan, I've seen our military's capacity for so-called peacekeeping. And this is not something we want here at home. This means that regardless of who is elected this November, our values must persist and the fight must go on without violence. Ladies and gentlemen, you know all this already. You have envisioned the look of our homes and our streets in a post-revolution world. That is why you're here, putting your own liberty at stake to take a stand for your rights while you still can. And we all know that we have one foot in the gray state already, since to say that your liberties are at stake is no longer hyperbole. But while you have envisioned this consequence, perhaps, where has been the artistic response to the social attitudes and fears of today? Why has there been no artistic revolt to the atrocities of our times? The artist's responsibility is to best exemplify the zeitgeist, to be the barometer of our social experience, and provide insight and expression to the world climate in which we live, far removed from the censorship and control of government regulation. We need these outlets to show us our values in new light, and if necessary, show us possible consequences of the loss of those values. But I think we can agree that on the national level, the artistic response has been silence, or worse, compliance. And so it's little wonder that while our liberties count down their final hours, all that most Americans are concerned about is who is winning on Dancing with the Stars. There has been very little voice for the cause of liberty, which traditionally has been given volume by the arts. My friends, in this regard, the Gray State Project will not betray you. This is not a documentary that speaks only to the few, but a narrative story that speaks about the universal truths of humanity's better natures and through trial by fire puts it to the test. It is as exciting as anything you'd go to see in the theaters, 
and as compelling and disturbing as the latest executive order. And while I make no claim that my efforts as an artist best exemplify the thoughts and feelings of every person in this room, I do assert that as far as expressions of freedom go, this is one we can all get behind. And while many are probably wondering what a film pitch has to do with the Ron Paul movement, the realists in the audience here today understand the need to explore a post-Ron Paul America. Because even if our greatest hopes are realized and Dr. Paul becomes President Paul, under the current paradigm, the complacency of future generations will allow the cyclical return of tyranny as we have done. That is why we must embrace the enduring expressions of liberty that the artistic community can provide. As a libertarian filmmaker speaking to my audience, I can pretty well guarantee you that if you support, if you support us and help get our films into mainstream theaters, we can together divert the social and political conscience away from the destructive, apathetic sleep state we are in. The gray state can be our Trojan horse into mainstream media, injecting real issues in the same way Dr. Paul has done. But it's an uphill battle. Just as Ron Paul requires grassroots support outside of the establishment, no Hollywood studio will touch the gray state project due to its contentious nature. That is why we need your help to get this film financed and seen in theaters, so it can make the impact it is capable of as a legitimate message of liberty. If Gray State resonates with you is true, as a vision of a future scenario we must avoid at all costs, I hope you'll consider supporting the project with a financial contribution, or at least spreading the message and getting the trailer seen by as many people as possible. So please visit our website at graystatemovie.com to find out how you can help us in our efforts. As you very well know, the fight for liberty is no longer a spectator sport. So it is paramount that we engage all of our resources for every frontline cause. If we don't, our children, for whom we hope to leave a better world, will find themselves fighting our battles in a scenario not too far off from what the gray state shows. As an artist and storyteller who is awake to the world, I will do everything in my capacity to meet my responsibility. The question is, will you? So again, I know that I'm speaking to people who are awake, and I know that I can count on your support. Gray State has already been described as a prophetic look into a terrifying future, but I appeal to you here today to help us prove them wrong. And through our united effort, we keep this film in the fiction section. Thank you. If you haven't already seen the trailers for this film, check it out on YouTube. Uh, really amazing. The production quality is really high. It's unlike anything you've ever seen coming out of the Liberty Movement thus far.